Um, Emily, discussion's a little bit long because it's kind of summarizing some of the stuff that is um, that you've shared, like from the website and from this work. But uh, I just wanted to say that many wise folks have pointed out that our food system is not broken. It's actually working very well the way it was designed um, and the people who it was designed to benefit. And that points to the history and the present day of colonialism and how Indigenous food sovereignty has been deliberately destroyed. And I really encourage folks to look up the website for The Healing Place. There's some really excellent articles on there about this. Um, so destroying Indigenous food sovereignty includes um, harming plants, seeds, animals, land and water, which traditional Indigenous food systems stewarded in a very wise combination of agriculture and food production sites, trading relationships for the nations and careful harvesting from wildlands and waters. And some of the harmful practices that continue to this day are forcing Indigenous people onto reserves, banning hunting practices, and other important food gathering practices such as wild ricing, wild rice also called manumen, and other important celebrations and ceremonies. So I was wondering if you could speak to the role of growing and sharing traditional foods and medicines in the healing place. Um, you know, the conversations around them and how you've seen some transformations happening in that space. Yeah, um, so, I mean, like you said, I think that's important, um, important history to know and context, especially to, if you're gonna be talking about indigenous food sovereignty, um, like that's, you know, that's the, that's the reality of, of where, of where it's at right now that um, it, most of it was very purposefully destroyed. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, I think Angel, you were looking at the, uh, probably uh, something on the, uh, on the Plenty Canada site, because I know, yeah, we have a pretty good page on there that kind of, you know, summarizes that pretty well, um, you know, just uh, Indigenous food sovereignty. So I can, I can put the link in the chat to that page afterwards as well um but yeah so so those things like you mentioned i mean that's you know those are those are the results of of colonization and like something that um you know something that everyone has to face that indigenous people don't have the choice but to face but that everyone else who is on this land who's not indigenous um you know needs to really make a conscious effort to realize that like we're, we're we're living right now with with colonization and like that's 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 the reality and you know it's not something that was in the past and it's it's been fixed now it's it's something that's that's still very very current um so so yeah like there you know indigenous food sovereignty like a, yeah like i said it's been it's been very purposefully destroyed like like some of the the examples that you mentioned, like you know, outright banning of these practices, like banning uh, the cultivation of wild rice, um, banning and you know, banning these any kind of cultural celebrations and ceremonies was was not allowed, and a lot of those were associated with food. Um, uh, banning banning hunting and fishing rights. Um, just like one example is the Williams treaties of 1923, which uh, were supposed to, uh, as you know, they were originally understood to allow the people to, to hunt and fish on those lands. And the government went back on their word and decided to not let them do that. And so generations of people completely lost their connection and their ability to do that. And all of those people are still dealing with that now. And that can't be just fixed like that's that's something that that's that everyone's living with the with the results of of now and so building that back is you know that's <laughs> there, there's a lot of there's a lot to overcome and a lot of this is not in very you know not it's in fairly recent history um the government put out an apology for the williams treaties um and the misinterpretations of it in 2018 <laughs> they released an apology um so so yeah i just i think that's important to iterate that that context so when we're talking about um you know building back that food sovereignty um it's not it's not a small task <laughs> so it's it's more than just about having food um and i you know i'm I do have that site open and I, I kind of just want to read it because I think it 
uh, summarizes it well. Indigenous food sovereignty asserts the cultural importance of eating foods that are not only nutritious, but an essential part of cultural frameworks that include spiritual and empathic relationships. Uh, reflecting the importance of food sovereignty to Indigenous nations, it was usually a main component in treaties negotiated with the Crown, um, which is why it was in that Williams Treaty, for example. Um, and so making those reconnections, um, it's really like, it's, it's a really big deal. It's about food, it's about reconnecting to the land, it's about connecting to culture and like building back so many things that that have been lost um so so yeah the healing place is just like a really small example of that and like trying to provide an opportunity for that um and so having a lot of those cultural plants there and a place that's completely open for anyone to come if they want to um it is it is so it is somewhat accessible also hopefully by um you know some of the urban indigenous community uh in Ottawa um it's not not too far away um but yeah the the idea is that I mean yeah people can hopefully come to this site and like experience some of these plants and and learn about them and have that hands-on relationship um and like I said it's a fairly you know it's a fairly small thing it's a small step but it's um but I think it's a really good example of something that can be done and something that's community led like indigenous communities are you know mainly the ones that are <laughs> that are leading the these recovery efforts and like they you know like bringing bringing these things back to their communities i mean that it's needs to be led by them with with the support like for the things that they need um and there's 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 a lot of that going on right now. Plenty Canada actually has a totally totally separate project all about um all about that um that has had different things going on over the last few years that I haven't been as directly involved with, but we've we've had a project um where uh, where the project coordinators have have uh, interviewed people at all kinds of different uh, different communities uh, across across Ontario and the country actually um about the the food sovereignty initiatives that they're that they're doing um and some of the responses to the COVID-19 pandemic and sort of evaluating like the effectiveness of those things so anyway my my point is that there is a lot of this work going on um being led by Indigenous communities um and they should uh yeah they should be they should be supported to to do that and the healing places I think one Great small example. <laughs> Thank you so much, Emily. I really appreciate that. Um, it really comes across very strongly that, you know, this is such a, a magnitude of a problem, um, but that, you know, we have to just keep picking away at this um, with community-led efforts that are supported and resourced and, and highlighted 